How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be replacing the drive belt on a John Deere Z245 zero turn riding lawnmower. So let's get right into it. So I have a John Deere zero turn riding mower here. And like I said, we're gonna be doing the drive belt today because my customer snapped the idler spring that keeps the tension on that drive belt there. So I have the old idler spring right here and you guys can see that the end just completely snapped off. So over here, I have a drive belt replacement. This is a Stens True Blue. The number is a 248-060 and that is a half by 60 inch belt. Now that belt there, replaces a John Deere M155343. So this is a OEM, just a composite belt. And I went ahead and cut this belt off because it was just easier for me to pull it out. Now I have a full IPL, which is an illustrated parts list. And it gave me the number of not only the spring, but also the belt as well. And when the spring broke on the idler for the drive belt here, the drive belt, you know, just started getting gouged and I told my customer that he might as well go ahead and replace the belt. So I just simply cut it off because like I said, it was easier. So how do we go about getting the new belt on? Well, it's quite simple. I'm just going to go over where the idler hooks up first. So we have the idler arm here and it rotates off of that carriage bolt right there. You guys are going to notice that the paint's rubbed off here. So I'm assuming that he was going up a steep hill and was putting a lot of load on this and it started rubbing against the metal frame here. So what I'm gonna do is once this all goes back together, I'm gonna put some grease on there and maybe it'll help it rotate a little bit. But the spring itself hooks up from this bar there and it goes all the way back over to that little black circular piece and it just simply hooks up there. It just sandwiches itself in between these two little washers. And then because that spring is always pulling the arm this way, that end of the arm ends up always putting a tension on your drive belt there. Now, because this is a zero turn unit, it has two individual hydrostatic transmissions. Each transmission has its own driven pulley. And then you have a pulley at the back here that's known as a drive pulley. So coming up underneath the machine here, here is our engine crankshaft. And we can see the bottom pulley that runs off of your PTO clutch. And that's to run your mower deck. The pulley on top of that, that is what runs your drive. We're gonna have to get some slack on the deck belt. So if we notice here, this is our deck belt that's going to the idler pulley there. And you notice this big spring right there. That is your mower deck idler spring. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect that spring so we can get a little bit of slack onto our deck belt. Now this can be done from up top or you can simply drop your mower deck a little bit and get it from the side. I've chosen to wear some gloves simply so that the spring does not pinch my fingers. Simple as that. So now that the mower deck idler spring is disconnected, we have enough slack on our belt to simply droop the belt just like that. Now we're not gonna be able to just take our drive belt and slip it up to the top pulley because you have your PTO clutch wire and we also have this little guy here which holds your PTO clutch from spinning. So we're gonna to have to drop the PTO clutch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just follow the wire all the way up to the connector. Now the PTO clutch connector is right there, so I'm just gonna simply unplug that. Now these switches have a little safety lock on them, so you can use a small slotted screwdriver to just pull that tab up, and then you can go in and unplug your connector. So our PTO clutch is now disconnected. Now we can move on to the bolt. Now because I wanna get in there with my impact gun, I've just gone ahead and jacked up the rear end of this machine. So now I can have a little better access at our PTO clutch bolt. And just as a safety precaution, it's always good to use some jack stands to hold up your machine. Go ahead and give it a little shake. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And you're just gonna go ahead and break that loose. To do that, I'm using a 5.8 socket on my impact gun. So now you can go ahead and drop your PTO clutch and our drive pulley here is going to be loose. So what I'm gonna do is simply slide this down and just watch you don't lose your key inside of the keyway there. But you guys see all this discoloration here and that little bit of grass built up? I don't want that to seize. So the next time somebody has to do this, I'm gonna make it easier for them or make it easier for me. And I'm gonna use some Permatex nickel anti-seize on this crankshaft here. And we're gonna make sure that the PTO clutch and that drive pulley never seize to this shaft. But now that the PTO clutch is out of the way, we can have a better look at our idler. So this is how 
it's normally going to sit and then spring tension over there is always pulling that arm that way so it's always going to have tension against your belt here and we can now have a little better look at our driven pulleys so we have a pulley there with a fan and then we have a pulley here with a fan as well so we're going to get to that in a minute but first let me take care of the crankshaft okay so now that i have some nickel anti-seize all over that crankshaft make sure you don't get it into the hole where the threads are because putting anything in there such as oil inside of the threads will actually change your torque settings. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to take my drive pulley here and we're gonna fit that back on. And now it's super slippery so if I let go, it'll probably fall back down. So what I'm gonna do is wrap my drive belt up and around the drive pulley. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my PTO clutch back on and just bolt it up loosely for now. Now don't worry about your idler or hooking up anything else just yet. Just go ahead and wrap your belt around and make sure that your key, because it was loose in there, just go ahead and make sure your key is pushed up just like that. And now we can go ahead and install our PTO clutch. So now we have our drive belt hooked up to the drive pulley. Our PTO right here is still loose. So what we're gonna do is go up to your little PTO clutch keeper so that it doesn't spin. We're gonna line the post up to the slot there. You wanna make sure that you get your drive belt here on the outside of the post that goes into the frame. So once you get that PTO installed, it'll look a little something like this with your bar that goes up to hold the PTO clutch in place and that'll be on the inside of the belt there. Then we can go ahead and tighten that up. And once that's done, go ahead and wrap your mower deck belt back around this pulley here. And then we will go ahead and reconnect the mower deck idler spring. So once again, with a pair of gloves, you're just going to go ahead and hook your spring back up. And to double check, I'm just going to simply spin my blade by hand. And we can see that the belt has not slipped off, so we're good to go. So now that the work on the back of the machine is done, we can move up to our transmission pulleys. Now to get your new drive belt onto your transmission pulley, it's gonna be a tight fit, but here's the trick. If you flip your belt to the flat side, so we can see here that the V is actually facing down, you'll have just enough room to slide your new belt in between the pulley and the frame here. That's also the benefit of running a true blue belt. It's a little bit stronger, it doesn't tear as easy. So if you have to kind of wedge it in there and roll the pulley around, then you're good to go and you won't really damage the new belt. Now it's gonna be loose, but we can spin it freely and the belt goes around. So it'll look a little something like that. Sorry if it's not the best shot, but we're tight on space. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same to this side. So once again, not a lot of space here, but just enough to fit that belt through. So at least John Deere was thinking. Plus they use carriage bolts, so the belt will kind of tuck in between the smooth carriage bolt head. So this is what I'm talking about here, guys. You get your belt to the flat side and you can just slip it right through, just like that. Like they made this so that it was literally just the right size. So we're gonna pull our belt tight on this end here and we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of extra slack at the back by rotating this pulley around, kind of like that. And now we can go ahead and hook up our idler at the back, and then once that's routed properly, then we can go ahead and hook up our idler spring. So this part is important because you wanna have your belt routed properly on your idler. So I flipped this picture upside down so that it's a little easier to understand because our spring is gonna be routed something like that, which means that your idler pulley is gonna be coming in from the left and pushing in towards the middle of the machine. And then from this point of view, these are your two transmission pulleys, and then right up here is where your engine pulley is. So we have all this extra slack on our belt here. So I'm gonna take that belt and I'm gonna tuck it to the inside of our idler. Now you're gonna notice that if you routed your belt the way that I did, your belt is gonna be on the bottom side of that keeper. We're gonna have to get it over top of that idler pulley so that we can loop it down and run it to the inside of the idler pulley. You can go up to where the idler arm bolts to the frame and just loosen that off, guys, it's super simple. So to loosen that off, I'm just gonna use a half inch deep socket on my impact. Break that loose, that's all you have to do. You don't have to remove the nut. And with that idler arm loose, you're gonna have just enough clearance to slip the drive belt up on top of that. 
and get it to the inside. So now what we're gonna do is just have a look at all of our pulleys. Make sure that the belts aren't slipping off. Have a look at your idler as well. And then come back to our drive pulley and this is how much slack you should have on your belt. We have to remember that the idler tension spring is gonna take up this slack. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is hook up my idler spring. But before I do that, I wanna take care of that little, I guess you can call it a chafing issue where the idler arm is rubbing up against the frame. So what I'm gonna be using is just a little bit of MotoMaster wheel bearing grease. Now you guys can see I've put quite a bit on here, but what I don't want it to do is once we hook up the spring, it's gonna pull it this way. I don't want a big glob of grease to fall onto our drive belt and cause a slippage issue. So I'm just gonna move that around a bit so it's not on there in big globs. That'll be a little bit better, I think. And now that the grease has been installed, I'm just gonna come back down to my impact here and we're gonna tighten that up. But we have to remember that that is a carriage bolt, so if you push up on it too far, the little square slot will pop out. So that's why I said you don't want to loosen it too much. So after you tighten it up, just come up to the bolt and make sure that it is flat. And just doing another once over, we can see that our belt slipped off of the drive pulley here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loop that back on and we'll go ahead and hook up our spring. And hooking up this spring is fairly simple. You're gonna come and hook it up from the top down onto the idler arm. Then we're gonna take our spring here and we're gonna loop it around that little post there. But before we do, just make sure that your wiring harness here is above the spring. And once you have your spring hooked up, go ahead and just double check your belt tension and we're good to go. So I'm just gonna jack this machine up using the black transmission mount plate there. And we'll get these jack stands out of the way. test our PTO clutch. Good to go guys. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get the drive belt swapped out and we also replaced the idler spring so now everything is working perfectly. If you guys enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.